That's fair. Well, praise God, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are live tonight. Welcome to Crystal Waters International Ministries. I'm here with uh, Glenn and Lynn Blakeney. I'm excited about what God is doing tonight. Just come on in and we're going to look for you on our um, uh, to see your comments. I'm just going to see. Oh, there we are. Praise God. And um, I'm excited for what God is doing. And um, I know that there are so many things happening in the world and, and relationships are so key to living well in this time and season. And I want to encourage you to um, take some time, write, take some notes, watch and see what God is going to do in your life. Now, let me just tell you about Glenn and Lynn. I've known them for over nine years, nearly 10 years now. Mm. And uh, we have been connected through the years and I'm so excited. They have a huge international ministry worldwide, touching the lives of people. They have a heartbeat to win souls, man, mm. to win souls. And not only that, to see them discipled, raised up and uh, to impart to the fivefold everything they need to be successful in their life and in their ministry. And mm. guys, I am so glad you're here today. Praise God. Amen. Thank you for, oh, for thank being here. You. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> thank you for you having us. To the <laughs> yes, thanks. thanks. We thought you were welcoming uh, the, the viewers still. So. Yes. <laughs> oh, I am. I mean, yeah. it's sort of a win-win here. Um, yeah. I'm not used to uh, using StreamYard, so it's like sort of a learn-as-you-go process in these things. Yes. But, um, yeah. So, Lynn, Lynn and Glenn, please share about your ministry. Tell us more about your ministry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, we have a ministry called Awake Nations, and um, we have been involved in traveling internationally, church planning, evangelism, crusades, leadership development. And, you know, we've pastored as well, and we've been working in Southeast Asia the past few years, mm -hmm. and Singapore, the Philippines, um, Indonesia. And it's just been a great privilege to be able to do that. And we have uh, great relationships with other leaders and mm -hmm. around the world. So we're just mm -hmm. honored to do that and preach the gospel and make disciples and and uh, just testify to the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's exciting. That's exciting. You know, I've 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 watched you as you've traveled around the world and I've watched what you and Lynn have done and the lives have been changed and the pastors who've been raised up and the prophets and the evangelists and the teachers and the apostles. It's just been amazing. And it's a, it's a joy to have you online today. And I see people are coming in. I see you all there. Hi, Debbie. Hi, uh, Pastor Hannington. God bless you. We have a, a number of people just coming in and uh, that's exciting to have you all coming in online. Well, we're talking about kingdom relationships we're talking about like people who are married people who want to get married singles mm -hmm. we're talking about those relationships we're talking about godly partners and what that all looks like and mm -hmm. uh, i'm excited about that so let's pray and then we're i'm going to ask glenn and lynn some questions and we're going to have a great time in the amen. holy ghost amen thank you, hallelujah father. father i just thank you for everyone yeah. online today thank you lord god for your love your power, mm -hmm. your dominion, your might, your wisdom, yes, and your revelation knowledge. Lord, we thank you for the free flow yes. of the Holy Spirit yes. to touch yes. lives and to bring about every good thing in their lives, in mm -hmm. our lives, in everyone's lives together today. Thank mm -hmm. you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Well, you know, uh, Glenn Lynn, most of the people online are actually running their own ministry or are planning on running their own ministry. Uh, God mm. has called them out and they're working on uh, getting there. And they're all at different stages, which is wonderful to mm. see. But there are many, you know, single people in the group. But let's talk about the singles first, okay? okay. Uh, they're, they have different... Um, they have different ideas about what it takes to be in ministry. And uh, mm -hmm. can we talk about being equally yoked and what that looks like in ministry? 
Sure. Um, yeah, I think, you know, when the Bible talks about being unequally yoked in Second Corinthians 6, and, you know, clearly it's talking about people that have uh, different value systems in the sense that one is a, a believer, mm -hmm. a child of God, and the other is not. And um, I think the context of Second Corinthians 6 is not just referring to marriage. It, it goes beyond that. But it's kind of like what Amos said, you know, how can two walk together unless they agree? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the fact is that um, when we're living in a place where we have relationships with people, whether it's on the job, uh, you know, it's it's in ministry uh, and, of course, in the family and in, in a marriage in particular, yeah. um, you know, we've got different kingdoms being represented here. The, the Bible says one is of the light, one is of the darkness, you know, one is of Christ, one is of uh, Belial. And so we have to recognize that it's even as we um, may we love different people we you can get infatuated with someone easily mm -hmm. but ultimately when it comes to making a decision to be married to someone mm -hmm. that's what we're talking about tonight mm -hmm. you know we have to recognize that there's two different kingdoms here and those mm -hmm. kingdoms according to Isaiah 60 are in conflict you know the the desire of the enemy is that his kingdom would cover the earth with darkness and the people with deep darkness. And of course we know God's will is for his kingdom to come, his will to be done. And that the knowledge of the glory of the Lord mm. would uh, cover the earth, just like the waters cover, fill the sea. So I think that's um, something we have to recognize right away. It's not just a case of, well, you know what, maybe he, he doesn't, he's not into church or whatever. Or she's not into church. Um, it's much deeper than that. And the enemy knows how to shut us down. And if he can drive a wedge in uh, that place through a relationship, mm -hmm. you know, he, he'll use it in whatever way. He'll exploit those people. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians 2, there is a spirit that works in the children of disobedience. Mm -hmm. And that's, of course, not the Holy Spirit. It's referred to there. That's the uh, unclean spirits as right. demonic spirits. Mm. And, and I just think it's so important that we recognize that, you know, that we, we can be in such, um, you know, just that the contrast and, and the mm. tension that, that can be there. Now we know there are people who are married and mm. they like Paul talks about this in first Corinthians seven, mm -hmm. when, Basically, the believers in Corinth wrote him and said, you know, what should we do if we're married to someone who's right. not a believer? And, you know, and Paul counsels them, well, if you're married to someone who's not a believer and now that you are a Christian mm -hmm. uh, and if they want to stay in the relationship, then, you know, you stay in the relationship. But the responsibility, of course, is to pray for them, mm -hmm. to to try to ultimately win them to the Lord. Mm -hmm. to be an example. And Peter says, you don't have to do it um, through just constantly nagging or putting pressure on them or coercing them, mm -hmm. but you do it through your lifestyle, a gentle and quiet spirit, um, you know, and, and the godly example that you set. But ultimately uh, when it comes to people, like you said, singles right. that are not yet in that relationship, then, it's really important that they find someone who is of the kingdom of God, someone who's a true believer in Jesus Christ. And, and that takes time to really um, recognize that. Uh, and I know for Lynn and I, like we, our story, we've been married for 37 years. Like we met when we were teenagers wow. and, and when we got married, we were still in our teens. So um wow. Yeah, so we we've, we've been together all these years, and this is of course a phenomenon um, for someone to be married that long today, and then especially being in ministry with all the stresses and tensions in ministry. Mm. Um, and then you know we've got we've raised three children, we have two grandchildren, and so life is is not easy. We know that there's challenges, but when we first met, um, this is kind of a, a 
an interesting story. It's pretty powerful, really. I was raised, well, when my when I was probably eight or nine years old, my mom came to Christ. Mm -hmm. And she began to pray for me. And, um, you know, I encountered the Lord. I saw a lot of miracles. I was healed. And then when I got into my late teens, I really started thinking about following the Lord. And I wasn't there. It was a process. But I started to pray. And I said, Lord, you know, if I'm going to get married one day, I don't want to make a mistake. And I want to marry the right person. So I'm going to ask you to send me the right person. Mm. Well, shortly after that, I met Lynn. And um, my, uh, my mom actually told us later, uh, I'll let Lynn <laughs> talk about this, that, uh, you know, she had been praying mm -hmm. for, for me to marry um, a godly, uh, why, a godly woman. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So what happened was, so when I came into Glenn's life, my background is I wasn't raised in a Christian home at all. Never heard the gospel, never, the only name of Jesus wasn't meant in a way that we would worship him. It was said in a wrong way, you know, that's the Jesus I heard about. So I never knew um, Christ at all, never heard the gospel. And so when I met Glenn, we were both still in the world. We weren't, you know, he wasn't serving the Lord. I had never known the Lord, um, but then he brought me home to meet his mother. And when I met his mom, she was a Scottish woman and um, hard enough tried to understand her accent but she was always talking about god and uh, little things around the house you know scripture verses here bibles everywhere things of that nature and i remember saying to glenn wow she's a really different woman um a bit strange i thought you know and she was always saying well i'll pray for you and and so on well anyway glenn's mom uh, was an intercessor and she really did intercede for me and I really believe she was a catalyst in me coming to know the Lord. Uh, she really showed me the love of God. She was a real mother figure to me. And it was what I needed at that season in my life. And so eventually, Glenn and I, you know, we did give our heart to the Lord. But years after, a few years later, she told me, you know, somebody said, uh, her sister actually said to her, well, I don't know about this girl. She's, you know... She's really, you know, she's not a Christian. Um, what what do you think? And she said, well, I know she's not. And she even went to the Lord and said, God, I was praying that my, my son would meet a Christian girl. And when Glenn brought her home, I said, Lord, but she's a nice girl, but she's not a Christian. But the Lord revealed to her, no, but she will become a Christian. Just intercede for her. And so she interceded for me. And I really believe that's you know, when I really met the Lord was through her prayers. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I just would want to add to that, um, Denise, that sometimes what happens, I think, is we we know what the Bible says, and we, we certainly need to um, obey the scripture. I mean, obviously, we need to obey the scripture, but mm. God is so much bigger than the way we think, you know, and, and everything God does is based on an idealism of this is my perfect will for your life. And, mm -hmm. and God knew the Holy spirit knew that Lynn would come to Christ mm -hmm. and, and she would really be not only um, a genuine follower of Jesus, but ultimately would be in the ministry as well. Mm -hmm. So, Ultimately, the Lord orchestrated that um, relationship in the sense that he brought us together. And so uh, even though at that time, like really, I wasn't serving the Lord either. So I would say it's not that we were really unequally yoked. We we're both in the darkness, really. Right, right. Now we're getting yeah. brutally honest here. OK. Yeah, <laughs> that's good. But that's I have good. to say, when we did get married, you know, we both received Christ went into the marriage, we were just, we were almost 20, uh, you know, just 19. And um, going into the marriage and living with Glenn, he was really on fire for the Lord. For me, it was all new. I really didn't understand a lot. 
I, you know, you might even say he was unequally yoked because I had received Christ, but it didn't go any further than that, really. There was a hunger in me, but I didn't really know much about God. I really didn't. So we went into the marriage this way. But Glenn was on fire. He'd get up at four in the morning to pray, read the Bible before he went to work at 530. You know, he was up and he'd come home and he'd be reading the Bible. And I, I mean, I really thought it was a bit much. But the one thing that really helped me to really encounter God and, and go deeper was Glenn really prayed for me. And he, he loved me through all the difficult things I had to go through. A lot of things I needed healed of uh, in our early years of marriage, my past, different things I had been through. But he really interceded for me. He, he was patient and, and really loved me through that time. Mm -hmm. And so that what, that's what really you know helped me to grow in the Lord and to become stronger. Because when we first got married, I remember saying to him, you know, Glenn said, you know, he he really felt like he was called to the ministry. And, you know, I could sense that that's what was going to happen. And he wanted children. But I said, well, I'll marry you, but I don't want children. And I'm not going into the ministry. And he said, that's OK. And at, years later, I said, well, why did you say that's OK? He said, because I knew God would change your mind. You know, God was going to mm -hmm. work in you. So it was an interesting journey. Yeah. It's interesting how, you know, we all have different lives. And I like the fact that you're sharing about the struggles in the beginning and what it was really like. Mm -hmm. And it puts it in better perspective so that uh, people can really look at the big picture and understand that intercession and praying for one another and loving people where they're at is mm -hmm. key uh, to, their, to a, a good godly life together. Uh, yes. Oftentimes we see people, you know, the... They, there's some of this going on, but it's in the communication of mm -hmm. um, talking with one another, communicating to our Heavenly Father, absolutely, first and foremost, but knowing mm -hmm. that he hears our prayers, knowing yeah. that he, he's working with us. Amen. Yeah, yeah amen. absolutely. Amen. Yeah. It's so good. Well, you yeah. know, one other thing I noticed um, is that um, there's often a fear attached of being alone. Mm -hmm. uh, for some people that they'll never find that spouse, they'll never find that person. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I, I really believe that we, we, we need to address that. And if you could speak to that area, that would be awesome. Huh. You know, one thing I would like to say, I was just thinking how, you know, over the years, uh, being in ministry and the people we've encountered, we've encountered a lot of single men and women um, and a few of them, I think about them, and they were really caught up in the fact that they weren't married. And that was their main focus. I mean, that's all they focused on. There was a call on their lives. You could see that God had a plan and a destiny for them. But here they were just focused on this one thing, and that was finding a relationship. I think of one girl in particular. Um, and she was just so focused on that, that she lost all focus with everything else. Mm -hmm. And so I think, you know, where it says, you, you know, the word of God says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. Uh, really seeking God, just going after God. And I find that when people that are in this place, um, yes, God cares. He wants to give you godly partners. He wants to give you someone who's going to be um compatible to you and and what you're called to do in life so you can work together but i think if we focus on him and seeking him and his will and then also the scripture one of the scriptures in psalm 37 that has been so dear to me is delight yourself in the lord and he will give you the desires of your heart as we delight in him and just focus on him and continue with him you know god will put you in the right place at the right time God will open up the doors for his perfect will. But it's like you don't go seeking it. You know, you, you'd seek him and God opens doors. Yeah. So and it's it's like the, the whole thing about waiting on God is it's it's really um, what, you know, you, we, we do OK at that. And then if it doesn't happen in a year or two or on our timetable based on our expectations mm -hmm. and it's protracted and prolonged, then sometimes what happens is people step out and they get in the flesh. Mm 
and they try to make things happen. Like we know Abraham did that, right? When he was waiting on God for mm. the promise, the, the promised uh, son. Mm -hmm. And um, so it's really critical that we don't give up. And I think it comes down to fundamentally, um, you know, that something that I, I, I believe is so true. And Lynn referred to Matthew 6, 33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So, you know, in that verse, you have a promise, right? Is that God will add, all these things will be added. Mm -hmm. everything we need, God will provide. And so we yep. have to, first of all, start there. Do we really believe that God knows what is best for us and he will give us everything we need? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in 1 Corinthians 7, Paul talked about um, singles, married, widows, mm -hmm. and and um, those who um, were, were divorced as well. And he basically said that if you are single, he said, you need to really come to the place where you know what God wants you to do. And if God wants you to remain single, mm -hmm. Paul said, like himself, you know, it can be a gift um, from God, celibacy in that sense, to remain single so you can focus on the ministry. And I know that um, Paul, Paul was clear. He said, it's not for everyone, right? Right. Right. So, but ultimately, if that's the call of God for your life, there will be a grace um, to to bring you through that. Mm -hmm. And but I, I want to say this, that the grace isn't necessarily something we experience um, automatically, because if we are just pushing our agenda mm -hmm. and we're just kind of, you know, expecting God to rubber stamp our plan. Right. Um, we won't necessarily have the grace because the Bible says he gives grace to the humble mm. and those who submit to him. And so when we submit to him and we basically say, okay, Lord, so what's your will? Whatever it is, I'm willing. Mm. You know, sometimes we just need to say, I'm willing to be made willing. <laughs> and, <laughs> Isn't that and, true? Yeah. Cause God true? works in us both to will and to do his good pleasure. It says in Philippians, right? Mm, right. So, I think that we have to get to that place. And when we are, when we're like, whatever you want, Lord, mm -hmm. I trust you. I know if you want me to be married, you've got the person out there that uh, is mm -hmm. perfect and compatible. Yeah. You want me to be single, then, you know, you're going to give me the grace to go through this. Amen. And, and that's a big part because as I said, in that verse in Matthew six thirty three, there's a promise, but there's also a process Mm -hmm. And the process is seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And if we engage in the process, that's our part. God will fulfill the promise. Yes. And as Lynn mentioned, Psalm 37, 4 as well. Same thing. Mm -hmm. There's a promise. Uh, he will give you the desires of your heart. That's the promise. The process is delight yourself in the Lord. Yes. And and we really have to become in focused on Jesus, infatuated with him. And, um, you know, he becomes our first love, our true love. And then out of that, he opens the door. In fact, we went through this. I mean, when Lynn talked about me praying for her and being this godly man who, young man who was on fire, well, there was a season before that where I wasn't really stable and I'd come out of the world and, mm. and, there was a period of, you know, I don't know, maybe a year yes. where I was occasionally um, every so often I would go out and on a, you know, binge drinking and backsliding and doing crazy things like that. And finally, after this happening several times, Lynn told me, you know, basically we're not going to get married. I'm not going to marry you. Mm -hmm. So, she gave me back the engage, uh, engagement ring. And at that time, the Lord like took me to the proverbial woodshed and <laughs> he started talking to me because I started praying and, oh, God, you know, I'm so sorry. And the Lord said to me, you're only sorry because you want Lynn. And, and then he, he said to me, until you learn to seek. And honestly, he kept saying to me, seek first my kingdom and my righteousness. 
and I'll give you what is best for you. Mm -hmm. But so I would, I would get in the car, I'd put the radio on and I hear that scripture quoted. I come home and my mom would be watching Christian television and <laughs> they, I'd hear that verse. I mean, I'd go to a church and someone would walk up to me and say, you know, I don't know why, but I feel like the Lord wants you to me to tell you Matthew 6 33 seek first the kingdom right and it just kept happening and happening and the Lord just told me he said forget about Lynn don't even talk to her basically and we because we weren't you know we weren't even communicating mm -hmm. and I said he said to me you just focus on me will you serve me if you have to be single will you serve me if she never comes back to you, will you serve me? And I came to the place where I, yeah, I just fell down and worshiped God and said, yes, I will serve you no matter what. Mm -hmm. And then um, for several months, a few months, two or three months, I had to live that out and really focus on him. And then one day uh, Lynn contacted me and then we, you know, I was going, we just start went slowly, but then the Lord just brought us back together. And of course she saw that I had changed as well. Yeah. So Praise learning God. to rest in him and, you know, his will and his grace. Hmm. Amen. It's so important, isn't it? And to, I, I like that uh, scripture, Psalm 37, four, I actually have it on my fridge. And yeah. it's um, so important that we delight ourselves in him. And Amen. he will, he truly will give you the desires of your heart. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, I love your stories. These are awesome because, you know, sometimes we don't get to hear the behind mm -hmm. story that right. here you are, 37 years of marriage in ministry for the mm -hmm. um, same amount of time plus. And no. I look at you, I look at how how you flow together, how you work together. And it's a pleasure and a joy to see. And uh, your demeanor towards one another is is sweet. And, uh, you, you know, we all want a sweet relationship. And I, mm. I remember um, hearing that, you know, um, a lot of times people want to win an argument. And yeah. um, that winning an argument is mm. totally the wrong concept in a relationship and communication. It's mm. about letting the other person win and the win really is when you understand one another and you and you work together um finding solutions as opposed to having mm -hmm. uh being right you can be right and then they say you can be dead right i've heard of that right. one too um <laughs> you know that may not be a scripture but it's definitely true, it's true. you yeah. can win an argument and just lose 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 um yeah. But as, as we continue on and, and think about everybody online and the people that they're raising up and the people that they are helping, I know that this will make a real big difference in uh, how we look at people that are coming into ministry, people who are just saved, people yeah. who are who are who have a call in their life, but it's just at the beginning stages. And mm. it's, it's, it's a process, isn't it? this process mm. of kind of growing together and figuring it all out and then having people around you that can help you uh, through your challenges. Um, yes. Of course, we go to the Lord first, but there are people who can help you make it easier or to help you understand better. And that's so powerful. Absolutely. We can help one another like yeah. that. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Praise God. Well, I, I think, you know, you, you touched on my next question already. You talked about Abraham and how he uh, kind of wanted to do things on his own because, you know, he was supposed, he was supposed to get a son and um, the son wasn't coming and he took things into his own hands and they and it just didn't work out. And I think, you know, in God's timing, all things are possible. And mm. that, you know, if people are wanting children and they're not seeing children, yeah, you know, how do you rest in the Lord with that? You know, I saw Abraham, but like, how do you rest in that, knowing yeah. that there's a promise, but it may be out there? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think ultimately it's not easy. Um, first of all, when we talk about rest, mm -hmm. 
Right. And we talk about waiting. Um, it doesn't mean we're being passive. Like we're just sitting there, you know, right. twiddling our thumbs. And because I, I, I sometimes say a lot of times we confuse waiting on the Lord um, or waiting for the Lord with waiting on the Lord. Hmm. And waiting for the Lord is like we're just and, and it's both. I get it. We're it's both. You know, we're waiting for God. He has his timing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but waiting on the Lord, like mm -hmm. in Isaiah 40, verse 31 says, those that wait on the Lord mm -hmm. shall renew their strength. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that word wait there is actually an active term. It m speaks of taking like a chord or two chords, three chords and twisting them together so that they become one. And of course, when you take two or three strands and you bind them together through mm -hmm. twisting, it becomes stronger, right? Mm -hmm. So that like the scripture talks about that threefold cord is not easily broken. Right. right. So, so the, the process of waiting on God is really important. So we actually are pressing into God. We're praying, mm -hmm. we're contending for his promise. Right. And, um, you know, we know there's warfare. Daniel 10 talks about how Daniel was waiting for revelation, for promise, mm -hmm. and that um, the prince of Persia was uh, hindering the, you know, the answer for coming through through the uh, Gabriel. But ultimately, um, we have to do both. We have to wait on God for his perfect timing. So that means we, we pray, we pray. Yeah you know, declare and decree things. We, we go deep with God. We worship him. We, we need to prophesy to ourselves at times mm. and remind ourselves of the word of God right. and quote the word and speak it over our own lives. You know, God said, and I love in Hebrews 11, it talks about the great people of faith. And it, one of the things it says is through faith, they obtained promises. Mm. And, yeah. and, um, Amen. I think that's really important that we recognize that. And so sometimes the enemy's trying to stop us. I think it's first Thessalonians two 14. It talks about Satan hindered me, Paul mm -hmm. said. And um, so there's that. And then of course, then there's the timing of God, but we contend, we believe, and then we rest in that. One of the other things about waiting on the Lord is we have to deal with our stuff as well. If we are, if there's stuff in our lives that we need to address and we're refusing to deal with that, mm -hmm. it's going to prolong the, you know, the process. So it's kind of like the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness, right? They were being tested. Mm -hmm. And um, ultimately when we're waiting, it also has to do with us as well, you know, and we need to to because it says in Deuteronomy 8 that when they're in the wilderness, he was testing their hearts too. Mm -hmm. And so I think that we we have to deal with that. If there's an area of disobedience, is, is there uh sin in our lives? Is there mm -hmm. you know stubbornness, rebellion, whatever may be going on? And we have to be honest about that and self-will. Yeah. Um, sometimes it may not be those blatantly, you know, obvious things. It might just be a process of God trying to just prepare us and work in us and, mm -hmm. you know, teach us patience, um, mm -hmm. teach us how to trust in him, go deeper with him in prayer and intercession. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, um, I think that's that's part of it. And when we're going through these things, you know, we ultimately go strong. We got to get stronger and we got to go mm -hmm. deeper with the Lord in our relationship as well. Mm -hmm. It's so important. It's so important. So resting in the Lord is, you know, is is you're you're pressing in. I like how you say you're pressing in. Mm. And that pressing is different for each and every one of us and, and overcoming exactly. those battles and challenges. And God is growing us in, in the process. We're just getting to get more sweeter and more refined and more beautified. So mm -hmm. in the it, as we press in, as we choose mm -hmm. to make a decision, as we choose to look at the areas that where God wants us to grow, and He will do that for us. Mm -hmm. Praise God! I think that's awesome. I yeah. think it's awesome. You know, I think that those times when I've really pressed in, 
with God. You yes. really pressed in to, to get an answer, to get a victory in something. And I can, you know, you can mark them. You mark right. those times where I was changed. And I and those those prayers where you cried out to God. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, things started happening. Things started changing. It was two days later, this happened. Three days later, that happened. Yes. And yeah. all of a sudden, you look at your life six months later down the road and you go, I'm a different yeah. person. Yeah. yeah. I'm not the same person. Mm -hmm. And you look in the mirror. And I like what you said, talking about the promises and speaking them over your life. And some of us got to get our pointy finger and point at ourselves right. in the mirror and say, you, you, this is what's mm -hmm. going on. This is what's happening. This is how yeah. God's changing your life right yes. now. And, mm -hmm. and just start decreeing to yourself like you're talking to uh, another person and mm -hmm. I, I, I like that. I get my grandma pointy finger out every now and again <laughs> and point to the mirror at myself. It's like, mm, this one, you're changing. <laughs> and uh, get, get busy. Get doing that. Get that book finished. Do what Amen. you need to do. Yeah. And, um, yeah that's it's good. important. We're waiting on the Lord, but he's like, no, no, come on. Get mm -hmm. move on. Let's get going. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Awesome. So, you know, I, I'd love for you to speak to the married people you have. I know what you've been sharing, um, but there's some things about uh, being in ministry specifically that I know they would love to hear about. Things like your vision and your dreaming and how you do that together, uh, separately and together, um, how you execute the plans for these things to happen. And, uh, and communication. So I'll just start off with vision and dreaming, and maybe you could speak into that for us. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll start. Um, I think that, Lynn, you know, Lynn mentioned there was a point, obviously, when we were talking about getting married, where she said, I don't want to be in ministry. I'll never right. go into ministry. Mm. And at that time, um, I felt very strongly that I was called to ministry and that we were. Mm. So I actually went to the pastor that our pastor at that time. And I asked him about it and he just said to me, don't worry about it. Just pray for her and just keep serving the Lord and doing the right things. And, you know, God will, if he wants that to happen, he can change Lynn's heart. Mm. So, so, um, I did, you know, I just tried to, in fact, I remember I, I didn't do that perfectly. There were times when I would <laughs> basically chat, you know, chastise her, try to tell her, well, you know what, you don't realize how much God wants to use me or whatever. Right. You know, and, <laughs> and, uh, and one day the Lord showed me a scripture in Hebrews when I was in my private time praying, he showed me a scripture in Hebrews three, where it talks about, um, Exhort one another daily while it's still called today, mm. lest any become hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. Mm. And basically what he said to me was, um, you really need to encourage, like don't nag, basically encourage because by nagging and so on, you're going to actually harden because mm. somebody, we don't know where people are at. Right. And when right. we can be doing damage to them and we don't realize it. And of course, young very young at the time mm. and immature in many ways myself. Mm -hmm. And, and so throughout the years, I think what has happened is we have really learned to respect one another's um, input into that. So for example, what has God called us to do? Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, if we, like we were talking before the program about when we, moved over to the other side of the world and we lived in Australia and how that happened. Mm. You know, we, we had to both come to a place where we felt that was God's will and we were in agreement. Mm -hmm. So that was so important. So that took time, yeah. um, prayer and trust, trust that, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know, trust that the Lord was, was in this, that he was speaking and, you know, that, that he could speak to Lynn or he could confirm it with me, whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. So, And I think one thing that Glenn and I have learned to do over the years is typically we spend our mornings, if we're able, we spend time together where we 
share about the day, we pray together. So we've learned to pray together um, for direction, for things in life we're facing. We faced many challenges within our family over the years that we've had to really um, pray together because otherwise it could have easily divided us. And, and listening to one another, I think that's the key. And respecting, like I've learned to respect the giftedness in Glenn that Glenn has, that God has called him to do. It's different than my giftedness, you know, like I have different giftings than he does. It's like all of us. And so he values that in me. I value that in him. And I, you know, I try and encourage him with the things that God has called him to do now. It's taken time, you know, over the years, but it's, it's something that's really important to do is to encourage one another, pray for one another, spend time and listen. I think that's the big key is to listen to one another, um, hear his heart, and he has to take time to hear my heart so we can come to an agreement together, you know, through the Holy Spirit for the direction that he would have us to go. Yeah. Amen. And, and I don't, I don't think like personally, there's, I don't think there's ever been a time where Lynn has just said, no way we're not doing that. I think Maybe because, <laughs> um, you know, maybe years ago, but in in <laughs> the past times. 25 years or so, I don't think so. Where yeah. just like, no, it's been like, okay, mm. uh, let's think about it. Let's pray into it. So mm. we give each other time to process yeah. and mm -hmm. and to hear from the Lord. And um, and so what will happen is, you know, let's just say I, I feel like the Lord put something on my heart and I'll share with her. And what will happen is she'll pray into it. And then a few days later or whatever, she'll come to me and say, you know, I, Hey, I was, the Lord gave me this word and uh, it was like a confirmation. And, and so I think we have to obviously trust mm. that the Lord wants to speak to each of us. And like, again, the scripture, how can two walk together unless they be in agreement mm. that has to happen. And we have to trust that rather than trying to force you know, people to comply with our, um, you know, sport, force our spouse to comply with us and what we want done. Mm -hmm. Or sometimes we just go ahead and do it on our own without them. Mm -hmm. And, and that's not good. We, we need to have their support and, and, uh, you know, agreement yeah. as well. So. Mm -hmm. Well, amen. Amen. What I'm uh, uh, looking at then one word that really popped that you were saying was process give mm. the other person time to yes. process and mm. oftentimes we want those snap decisions or you know why aren't you agreeing immediately with my decision about yeah. what i heard from god that we should do and, mm. and you know it's like whoa let's take a step back here and mm -hmm. allow the other person time to process time to hear from god that was so good so so yeah. important and you know there's always time for that, isn't there? This God's never in a do it now, do it now, do it this minute. He's always, he, he wants us to understand. He wants mm -hmm. us to be in agreement and he wants us to seek him on those big decisions and the small ones too. You yeah. know, it's not just the big ones. It's, it's the, you know, depending, I guess, uh, big decisions and small decisions is actually a uh, subjective. It's what mm -hmm. is important to uh, the couple, the people yeah. involved. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's so, so, so vital. Praise yeah. God. Wow. So, um, you know, I learned some skills a while ago about effectively communicating uh, that, you know, when you're angry, sit down, lower your voice, soft answer turns away wrath it's a powerful mm. thing to learn yes. when when you look at them and you're having a conflict i often say look look at them through the eyes of jesus and ask jesus what's going on how does he see what's going on in this situation mm. and i found that has been very helpful in in dealing with conflict with not even not not only in uh, marriage relationships but in with your children, with your grandchildren, yeah. with uh, your relatives. It's a powerful things that we can do to uh, be good communicators in every yeah. area of your life. Mm -hmm. um, praise God. 
looking at the list, I just want to give you some time, uh, Glenn and Lynn, to just uh, share your heartbeat now with the people. And, and then maybe we can, if there's any questions, I can look for questions. Or mm -hmm. we can just, um, maybe you can pray for the people. Absolutely. Sure. Uh, awesome. Whatever, nice whatever you would like. Yeah. 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 No, we're honored to be here with you. And thank you, you know, for inviting us into your domain here and mm -hmm. the people that you minister to and, yeah. and have a relationship with. So we're honored to be here. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, what we were talking about earlier in terms of working together, hearing from God mm. and being on the same page that also has to do with honor, right? Because yeah. one of the things that is so important, it's a value in God's kingdom. One of the greatest values is honoring one another. And, you know, the, yeah. there's some great books that have been written on marriage out there. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I think any, any book that's worth its salt really is rooted in the scriptures because God is love and, mm -hmm. and he, he sh demonstrates to us his perfect love, which is sacrificial love and mm -hmm. giving love. It's not selfish at all. Mm -hmm. And, and coming to that place where we can truly be unselfish. And that's my prayer is um, mm -hmm. my desire is to really walk in that, you know, mm -hmm. and, and I see, all too often uh, selfishness. But I think on the other hand, Paul talked about by the grace of God, I am what I am. I'm no longer what I was. And, mm -hmm. and I think that there's been a lot of change in both of us. You know, God has really changed us mm -hmm. and, and we're much more compassionate, caring and honoring toward one another. Right. And so when we really walk with the Lord, and we focus on that relationship with him. And then mm -hmm. that's going to obviously translate into our relationships, our marriage with our kids, our family, yeah. um, you know, as leaders in God's church, um, we got to have good relationships with people. And, and there are, as you know, you can see, you see that today in some places, uh, but it's changing. It, it used to be, you know, I remember in Bible college being told, don't get close to people in the church, right? Because you don't want to show you're vulnerable. And, and, and uh, if you get too close to them, they may betray you. And there's some truth to that. I understand that. But um, Jesus was up close. You know, mm -hmm. he was, he was up close with people and, and um, he was real. No and what you saw. Yeah, no social distancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. So so I think that um that's the one of the other things is we've tried to emulate that and model that with others. And I mean, you know, I mean I've seen uh and I've heard and I, I've seen the messages and you know uh, where people part of churches we pastored or people we've known have messaged, especially like when we pastored in Australia, for example, we were there for several years. So you get to really get know people, build relationships. And then people would comment on the fact that, you know, ladies would say that Lynn took time um, with them. Like she yeah. would always listen to them and mm -hmm. spend time with them and honor them basically and how that really impacted their lives. And, and so I think that um, this is something that we've, we're trying to learn is basically really loving and caring for people genuinely. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to do that in our home first and foremost, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think, you know, communication is so important um, with husband and wife, you know, a spouse, uh, especially when you're in ministry, you go through a lot of different things. Over the years, we've been through a lot of different things um, in ministry, in our family. And the one thing that has really helped Glenn and I uh, to continue and to have a strong marriage is that we actually take time to be with one another where, you know, we put ministry aside. I mean, you can't always talk about that. You have to build your relationship, too. And I think that's, for, you know, a really important key to a healthy, strong marriage in ministry is to take time and, you know, put ministry aside, put your phone down, 
put things aside and just take time to just, you know, be with one another, have a day off and, you know, take a holiday when you can and, you know, really enjoy and be able to refresh your love for one another. Yeah. Amen. That is vital. That's a really, really big point. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. I, yeah. I look at it and, and, you know, enjoy each other's company, enjoy your time together, have, right. have time, you know, for the two of you. Yeah. It's so vital. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, Amen. Praise God. Mm-hmm. Well, how about if I get you two to pray for the people here, if you wouldn't yeah. mind. Amen. Yeah, amen. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, thank awesome. you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Father. We thank just you, thank Father. you, Lord, for um, your amazing love and your grace. We thank you for those that are watching this broadcast tonight. Yes, Father. And we pray, Lord, that um, what has been shared would encourage them. Thank you, Jesus. Lord. I think uh, that it would be, at the very most, Lord, it's just wetting their appetite. Mm. And we just pray that you would take what is, was shared tonight and just cause us to to want yes. to go deeper with you, to Thank know you more about you, me. to know how we can be better at um, mm-hmm. manifesting and demonstrating your love to one another, mm-hmm. being selfless, being servants, Lord, honoring yes, one Jesus. another, all of these things that you place such a premium on mm-hmm. in your kingdom, Lord. Thank and we you, pray, Lord. Father, that you would give us wisdom. I pray tonight for those who are watching that they would make godly decisions based yes. on waiting on you, Lord. And, Father, they wouldn't rush ahead. There would be no mm-hmm. nothing in them that desires to do their own will but yes. to please you and to do your will. And you have said, Lord, that those who trust in you will not be disappointed. So we thank, thank you, you for that, Lord. Yes, Lord. And in the time of waiting and in the disappointments, Lord, when uh, it's easy to grow weary, yes. Father, we thank you, Lord, that you are the God who fulfills your promises as we submit to you mm. and as we incline our ears to what you're saying, Lord. And I know sometimes we just need to um, just reposition ourselves. And mm. and sometimes, Lord, we need to connect with with the right people. Yes, Father, um, We you, need to God. connect it with maybe a different place, but ultimately we know it comes down to our relationship with you being just uh, more deeper and, and um, powerful Lord. So we thank you father. And we pray Lord, there would just be a clear encounter with you, Lord, Yes, that Lord. you would just cause uh, your sons, your daughters that are watching this tonight, Lord, just to have such a desire mm. to, um, represent you and and to um, present you well to this world, Father. Yes, Father. Because you you did say through the Apostle Paul, Lord, that um, the mystery is is a husband and a wife is like the that mystery, Lord, is like the love that Christ has for His church, and we thank mm-hmm. you for that, Lord, and we pray for that. Yes, that we would just manifest the love of Christ for people through how we love one another, because Thank they will Jesus. see that love in us, Lord, and they will know that it is your love. It's not a natural human love, but it's a spiritual agape love yes. that comes from you. It's supernatural, Lord. So we thank, thank you, you and we bless each person watching mm. and we give you honor and glory, Lord, for what thank you're doing you, in their lives and what you're going to continue to do. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you for each one who is here tonight, Lord God. And Father, you know their circumstances, Lord. You know what they're walking through, Father. You know those, Father, who may be single, Lord, and desiring to have that soulmate come alongside of them, Lord, and and even do ministry with them, Father. Father, we pray specifically for them tonight, Lord God, that you would guide them and you would lead them and you would direct them, Father, as they seek first your kingdom and your righteousness, Lord God. Father, as they delight in you, Father, we believe, Lord, that you will give them the desires of their heart. Father, just help them to be strong and not fear. Father, you said perfect love casts out fear. Year. Yes. So, Father, we thank you for your promises in your word. We thank you for guiding yes. each one, Lord God, not to fear, but to trust you yes. and to press in 
it was said tonight yes, about sir. resting in you, Father. And we yes. know that even though sometimes we're resting, it doesn't mean just lay down, Father. It means to stand up and fight and rest in you, God, as we as we press into yes, you, Lord God, for the fulfillment of your promises, Lord, that we would not give up, Lord. And for those who yes, maybe sir. are, they have given up or are giving up, Lord God, that you would just strengthen them tonight, God, that you would renew them tonight, Lord, yeah. their relationship with you, Father God, just light the fire again, Lord God, light the fire, God, strengthen them, Lord, let them know that you are with them, Lord, your arm is not too short, Lord, that your ear is not deaf, Lord. We thank you, God, that you hear them. Uh -huh. You hear the cries, Lord. And for those in ministry and, and, and couples, Lord, yes, we just Lord. pray that you would strengthen marriages tonight. Strengthen yeah. those relationships tonight. Yes, Father Lord. God, do those things you desire to do in each individual yes, that um, the two would be truly be one father yes, one sir. in all that they are doing god yes, and that you would give them compassion and mm -hmm. love for one another lord we thank you yeah, for lord. this time we thank you for the privilege you, and lord. honor to be here and we bless your name in jesus name yes lord thank you jesus thank you thank you father yes lord we thank you we honor you lord. yes lord thank you lord. thank you jesus thank you father <clears throat> and it's just i want to just say that you know if you are watching and you've just, life has not been easy for you. Perhaps you're a um, single parent, single mom, mm. even, and you've got kids and it's just not been an easy thing. You know, I want you to just please be encouraged yeah. uh, and also just refreshed with the revelation that the father is there. He's watching over you and he's going to continue to watch over your kids mm. and he's going to guide them and protect them. Mm -hmm. I just, I'm just feeling tonight that there's someone, it's like, I see like a teenage boy and, and um, you've just kind of very concerned and you, mm. there's a caring relationship. There's a, just a very close relationship there. And, and, you know, you're just concerned and, and I just feel like the Lord is saying it's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Mm. He's going to come out of this Thank just you, fine. Jesus. And uh, he's going to be strong. And I just feel like the Lord's saying that um, you're going to be pleasantly surprised is what I feel like the Lord's saying. Pleasantly surprised and how he uh, navigates through these things and, and, just keeps his head above the water and moves Thank forward you, with the God. Lord. Yes. And so the Lord is watching. He's protecting. He's keeping you, him safe and the name of Jesus. So thank we you, thank Jesus. you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And we pray that word, you know, even over all our kids. We mm. thank you, Father. We release that word that yes. you are guiding our families. Yes. You're protecting us and you're, you're watching over our kids, Lord. And mm. You're drawing them to yourself, Father. Hallelujah. You are protecting them, thank Lord. You, we thank you for your faithfulness. Mm. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise thank God. You. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Lord. Yeah. Praise God. Uh, if you have any other words of, of knowledge or anything else that you'd like to pray, please continue. This is wonderful. I see that uh, there's been a couple of comments here that... Uh, um, um, uh, Pastor Hannington says, I like the aspect of emulating the model of Jesus Christ and doing uh, ministry, you know, social distancing. That's powerful. Uh, a lot of amens to that. And, and how um, um, uh, Joy, Pastor Joy from Nigeria, I think it's like 4 a.m. And she just came off of a night oh. vigil of prayer. And she came yeah. straight online to be here. And yeah. I'm just so grateful. And I see Debbie online who is um, just, uh, I mean, it's a tough day for her to be online. She She's receiving healing now for some dental work. And mm -hmm. um, I see uh, Linda Brown and Hannah from England online and i'm just so grateful yeah. for all these people who have showed up and i if i miss your name forgive me there's there's um um pastor julie from australia online and okay. uh, faithful chris is here and i'm just so grateful to see you all online mm -hmm. and i know that many of you minister to others and i know these words will help you and i believe there's been a great impartation of god's mm -hmm. word into you uh, a great grace released that these 
this couple carries. And I believe that uh, we have received a great gift tonight mm -hmm. from the Lord. And uh, that there's been this transference of anointing and grace for the season in your life. Uh, mm -hmm. These this couple is a couple of overcomers and uh, who walk in great mm -hmm. grace. And I know that grace is for all of us and mm -hmm. that we've got to partake of that grace today. Yeah. That's amazing. And that's powerful. That's how God does his thing. That's how he is. And I feel the anointing on these words. Mm -hmm. And I'm so grateful to know you. And I'm so yeah. thankful for you mm -hmm. coming online and saying, yes, we'll do this. And being a part of what Crystal Waters is doing around the world and what these wonderful ministries from all over are doing around the world as yeah. well. So mm -hmm. I want to say thank you again for joining us. You know, we don't have to be long, but we just need to be strang yes. yeah. for we can take an hour yeah. and just mm -hmm. allow God to intermingle with our thoughts, with yeah. our words, and with one another. And yeah. there's yeah. great joy in that. Mm -hmm. And I see many Absolutely. thank yous uh, to everyone. Uh, Sheila says thank you. They're saying thank you to you and um, mm -hmm. um, are very appreciative for the words you have shared. Mm -hmm. It's a blessing. So mm -hmm. I think we can round up tonight unless you have some other words that you needed that have come to you. Um, yeah. No, I, I, I was just going to say, first of all, thank you. And for everyone who's yeah, watching, thank just you. thank you guys yes. for tuning in. We want you to know that um, we are standing with you. We're going to pray mm -hmm. with you. And even yeah. tonight, as we've seen some new names been introduced to to new people, mm -hmm. um, that we will. And as, as was mentioned um, by Apostle Denise, there's a place where we overcome, but we're still all um, hmm. required to keep going. And there's still a lot of things we have to overcome yeah. in this season, yes. especially in this season, things are, hmm. are just crazy around the world. And we just need God at a deeper level. Mm -hmm. um, I, I was just saying, wanting just to pray for those who are in ministry. Absolutely. And, please. Yeah. And, and, and yeah. as you mentioned, there are some who have plans to really step into ministry, but we can just pray over them and, mm -hmm. you know, just that. something that will take them perhaps to a, just a, a greater level of uh, mm. intimacy with God. Yeah. And out of that intimacy will flow um, authority we know as well. So, yeah. so Lord, we thank you for every person thank that you. is watching oh, tonight. Yes, Lord. Thank and Lord, you, we give you the glory and the honor that Hallelujah. you have chosen them. Yes. You have caused them to be reborn by your spirit, you, Lord. Your spirit. You oh, have oh, uh, appointed oh, them, Lord, and oh, anointed oh. them to serve mm. you and yes, to be you, ministers unto you, Lord. And so Thank we you, pray, Father. Father, in this season, Lord, that yes. there would be just such a, a deep yes, uh, seeking Lord. after your presence and your mm -hmm. glory, Lord. Father, just a deep consecration mm -hmm. in, in the lives of your people as we just distance ourselves more and more from the things of this yes, world. Jesus. And not obviously the evil things, Lord, but also even those things that distract us and, and cause us to um, lose our focus on you, Lord. And we yes. pray, Father, that you would help us just to really seek first your kingdom and your righteousness. And we yes. pray, Lord, for just a new hunger a fresh hunger, Lord. And even for those who are, mm. are uh, determined in their heart to seek you, to know you, Lord, yes, Lord, we pray that you would reward them, Father. You yes. are a rewarder of those that diligently seek you, your word mm. says. Mm. So we pray tonight for fresh yes, encounters Lord. with Thank you, with you, greater Lord. revelation mm. and knowledge of who you are, Lord. Yeah. And just a strong, strong, overwhelming um, yes. sense of your presence in their lives, Lord. We pray that you would just begin to take care of things that need to be uh, mm. addressed, Lord. Father, we thank you for your provision. We thank you for answering prayer. And we thank you, Lord, for opening the right doors. But we pray, Lord, just for a deeper a yes. level of hunger, Lord. Yes. Uh, just such a greater hunger, Lord. For you, you and Father, for what yeah. you want to do in our lives, mm. a greater level of obedience and consecration, yes. Father. So we speak that Hallelujah. and we just say in the name of Jesus thank tonight, you, Jesus. we thank you, Lord, for what you're releasing by your mm. Holy Spirit into the lives of your sons and your daughters yes. who are watching here. Yeah. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We yes. give you glory in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Yes, Father. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank Father, you, Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight as well, Lord. We know that many out there are going through different tests, Lord. And Father, we know tests come our way, Lord God, that you yeah. bring us through things, Lord, and you test our spirits, you test our hearts, God, as we walk through different yes. things in life, Father. But we thank you, God, that you will give us strength, Lord, to yes, even Father. pass the test, Lord, yes, to Father. pass the test, to not give up, to press yeah. in, to believe, Lord God, that whatever we're walking yes. through, God, that you are with thank us, you. God, and you will help us with that, Lord. And Lord, we know that when we do pass the test, Lord, you will give us a testimony, Father, a testimony yes, of your great uh, love and your great kindness that you show to each and every one of us, God. Help us not to faint, Lord God. Help those not to give up, Lord God, but to keep trusting you, Father, yes, through Lord. everything they're walking yes. through, God. Father, we, yeah. we don't look to man, Lord God. Father, that's one thing you've taught me is don't look to man. Don't look to man in any situation, Father, but look to you. So, Father, as we yeah. look to you, God, we trust you and know that you're going to bring us through our trials, our tribulations, the tests we're walking through, God. Father, so we can give you glory and honor, Father, knowing that you never leave us, Lord, and you never forsake us. So, Father, we thank you for this awesome group of people. We pray yes, that Lord. you would just meet yes. their needs meet them right where they're at for those even tonight yes. who need healing in their body father we know that your anointing is here yes, lord god yes. that father you're our healer lord and father we just thank you for healing bodies tonight we declare and decree god that the bodies would be healed tonight father yes. lives would be transformed father yes lord. we glorify you tonight in jesus name yes lord thank you thank father, you, father. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Thank you. Hallelujah. I see some names I haven't mentioned. I've seen um, uh, George Cohn all the way from Australia. And of course, Sandra mm -hmm. Dawn here in the Vancouver area. Amanda mm -hmm. from uh, the uh, state of Maine uh, is mm -hmm. online. And so mm -hmm. are some wonderful people from New York City. Hallelujah. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I just know that... Uh, some of you will catch the replay and some of you are getting off of work and things are just happening, but you, you mm -hmm. are able to catch a piece of it. You'll catch mm -hmm. the replay later. And I know God's going to speak to your hearts. Um, um, uh, George, I just know that you're having, you're, you're going to have tremendous breakthrough um, mm -hmm. with your ministry yeah. and it's a, a beautiful ministry. And I'm just so blessed to know you and your dear wife. Thank you. And I'm I'm so excited. Uh, Amanda has an amazing ministry. Her and her husband, um, or, um, Jeremy in in um, Maine, and mm -hmm. um, it's 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 growing, it's expanding, and I'm just so grateful for what God is doing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! I'm just um, I'm just so blessed to know these people. Awesome. These people have touched and changed my life, awesome. and love dearly. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Amen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Praise You're an awesome, God. awesome woman, Denise. We appreciate you. Yeah. Love you awesome. so much. Yeah. Well, it's just so much fun. Life is yeah. good when you're around kingdom people who have the heartbeat to serve God with everything that they are. Mm -hmm. And I see that in you, and I see that in the people I, I work with, that they have that heartbeat that they're just yeah. going for God. They're just yes. hungry and thirsty. Amen. For the move of the spirit to see lives changed and transformed, to see people mm -hmm. discipled. You know, yeah. I know COVID's kind of shutting things down. There's some uh, distancing happening, but you know, in the in in our heart of hearts, there's no distance. And mm -hmm. we hold these people in our heart. We hold their congregations. We hold those that we are are given the privilege to minister to. We hold them in our heart. Amen. And we carry with the, them with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, as God carries them in his heart, they're in our hearts. We yeah. don't carry the burdens, but we carry the love mm -hmm. and uh, the compassion and the mercy for their lives. And uh, they matter. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you've been, you know, steadfast and persistent. Mm. In, and uh, even during COVID-19, <laughs> you know, you've been yeah. online and you've just kept uh, pouring into people. So Amen. the Lord Bless sees you. that yeah. and, you know, he's going to continue to expand your territory and your influence. That's for Amen. sure. Yes. And, 
Well, yeah. step by step, we'll just Amen. love on people and make people. a difference. Mm. Yeah. And then one that's person good. at a time, that's how we make a difference in mm. the lives of others. Absolutely. And mm. I like the model. I like the let's do relationship. Relationship is the most important thing. It is. Right. Yeah. Yes. With one another. Yeah. Above all. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Great. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think there's somebody out there that's been thinking kind of like second guessing if they're supposed to write a book. And um, it's like the Lord wants you to know, yeah, you do that. It doesn't matter. You think, well, I don't know how widely it'll be distributed. That's OK. Just do what the what the Lord has put in your heart. And and I'm sensing there's something about intercession and and praise as well, you know, that needs to come forth, um, whether that's on pages or in, in that's the content of the book or the focus of the book. But you you know, I just feel like the Lord saying that, yeah, you just go ahead and you do that because mm. it is going to bless people. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh, amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Mm. Amen. Amen. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Awesome. Wow. Well, I I think uh, tonight has been just a wonderful night. I want to thank you uh, for yeah. being online with us. Uh, it's been awesome. Thank you, everyone out there in Facebook land and possibly YouTube land. We'll see where, how this goes. Uh, I just want you to know that you are loved and this was put on for you guys. Uh -huh. you, God had you on his heart and Amen. wanted to share his heartbeat regarding life and ministry. Amen. And so uh, stand strong in the Lord and the power of his might. It's, uh, you know, we're here for one another. You're not in this alone. Right. And we're not lone rangers. We need one another. So let's keep working together, helping mm -hmm. one another, lifting each other's arms. Absolutely. We'll get much accomplished as we collaborate and work mm -hmm. together. Amen. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the best way to do life and ministry is together. Is. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm going to say bye, everyone, for now. Thank you for joining us. I'm going to look at the comments later and... Um, I will talk to you soon, and I will talk to you, Glenn and Lynn, soon. God bless Thank you. God bless. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a great so night, everyone. Bye for now. Bye-bye.